In this video, I'm going to take a look at an analytical approach to solving limits. I'm going to do about three examples, and they're going to be very, very common analytical approaches to limits. Okay, so my first example here, I've got the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 over 1 minus x. All right, now in this scenario right here, the first thing you always want to <clears throat> try with any limit is a direct substitution just to see what you get. So I'm going to do a direct substitution and plug 1 in. I'm going to have 1 squared minus 1 over 1 minus 1. All right, and that becomes 0 over 0. All right, that tells us <clears throat> that it is an indeterminate form. And that basically says, well, we've got to do more work, that there's going to be an answer, that we should be able to find one. We just have to do more work. So um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take a look at what I've got. On the top, I've got an x squared minus 1. And hopefully you recognize your factoring. That is the difference of two squares. All right, so I'm going to do the limit. <clears throat> As x approaches 1, I'm going to go ahead and factor that numerator. So that's going to factor into an x plus 1 and an x minus 1. All right, then I'm going to take a look at that denominator. That denominator is really close to the x minus 1 in the top. All right, except my signs are just switched, so I'm going to factor out a negative 1 out of that bottom so that I can then write it as x minus 1, <clears throat> and those terms are going to match. All right, now if you need to check and verify, negative 1 times x gives you that negative x. Negative 1 times negative 1 gives you the positive 1, so those things are equivalent. Okay, from there, I can factor out those x minus 1s. That's going to leave me with the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 1 over a negative 1. And now I'm ready to do my direct substitution of 1, which means that that's going to leave me with a 1 plus 1 over a negative 1, which is going to give me a negative 2 for my overall limit there. Okay, so th in this analytical approach, what we were doing, our algebraic method, was to factor. So we were factoring, all right? And that is a very, very common method um, that you're going to use, factoring of any type. It doesn't have to be the difference of two squares. It could be a trinomial, it could be factored by grouping, might be um, the difference or sum of two perfect cubes, but you will encounter a lot of limits where you need to factor and cross things out to be able to solve the limit. <clears throat> All right, in the second example, I've got the limit as x approaches 0 of 7 over x plus 7 minus 1 all over x. All right, so right off the bat, I can look at this, and I can see that this is a complex fraction. All right, so I am going to want to go ahead and check that direct substitution and see what I get. So I'm going to plug 0 in for x, so then I would have 7 over 0 plus 7 minus 1 all over 0. All right, this term's going to be 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so I'm going to get 0 over 0, which again is that indeterminate form, which tells you, yep, there's more work you can do to this limit. Now, since this is a complex fraction, the algebraic method that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to eliminate this complex fraction, so I'm going to multiply through by the least common denominator. So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0 of 7 over x plus 7 minus 1 all over x, and I'm going to choose to multiply by the least common denominator. Least common denominator in this scenario would be x plus 7, so I'm going to multiply by an x plus 7 over an x plus 7. All right, we'll make a little note here that that least common denominator was x plus 7. All right, basically all you need to do is look at all your denominators. In this fraction right here, I've got an x plus 7. This is not a fraction, so it would be 1 over 1, so the denominator would be 1. And then down here, if I think of this as a fraction, this would be x over 1. So of those denominators, 1, 1, and x plus 7, my least common denominator is x plus 7. Now, the reason you choose to multiply through by the least common denominator is because if I distribute here, do some multiplication on the bottom, it's going to eliminate my fractions which is what I want. So the limit as x approaches 0. All right, if I distribute here x plus 7 times 7 over x plus 7, the x plus 7s are going to cross out, leaving me with just a 7. All right, and then if I distribute here, it's minus this binomial. So minus the binomial, I've got to remember to put that set of parentheses around it because this is a binomial. 
all over and then multiply it on the bottom. Now, I'm not going to actually want to distribute on the bottom because you don't want to get in a big hurry here because things are going to cross out pretty nicely. So I'm going to leave the x there and then just show the multiplication of that binomial. All right, now doing some more algebra simplification here. I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0 of 7 minus x minus 7. And then on the bottom, x, x plus 7. All right, so those two 7s are going to cross out because positive 7 and minus 7. All right, and then there's a little minus 1x over the x. The x's are going to cross out, but it's going to leave you with that little imaginary negative 1 in the top. So then I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0 of a negative 1 over and x plus 7. All right, at this point, I now can do my direct substitution, plugging in the 0. So negative 1 over 0 plus 7, which is going to give me a negative 1 seventh. Okay, so this, this example focused on the multiplying through by the least common denominator to get rid of the complex fraction. Okay, so that's a common algebraic approach. So let's just say multiplying through by least common denominator. All right, recognizing you do have to have that complex fraction for this algebraic technique to work. All right, now let's do one more example. Let's suppose we've got, in this example, uh, the limit as x approaches as x approaches 0 of the square root of x plus 2 minus the square root of 2 all over x. Okay, so I'm again going to start with that direct substitution, plugging 0 in. So square root of 0 plus 2 minus square root of 2 all over 0. All right, square root of 2 minus square root of 2, 0 over 0. So again, I do have that indeterminate form. All right, so basically that just says do more work. Now, I'm going to get used to looking at this right here, and I'm going to see that <clears throat> my numerator's got some square roots in there. All right, and if you recall from like an earlier Algebra 2 class, you used to rationalize the denominator, all right, to simplify that denominator to get rid of the square roots in it. So in this um, example, we're going to rationalize the numerator to get rid of the square roots in there and to make it a lot simpler. So I'm going to rewrite here. I'm going to go the limit as x approaches 0 square root of x plus 2 minus square root of 2 all over x. All right, now, when I choose to rationalize my numerator, I need to multiply by a form of 1, and it needs to be the conjugate. All right, if you remember, the conjugate is always the opposite sign here because I'm forcing a difference of two squares to be created in my numerator. So I'm going to choose to multiply by the square root of x plus 2 plus the square root of 2 all over square root of x plus 2 plus square root of 2. All right, now let's go ahead and go across on this one since I've got the room, the limit as x approaches 0. Okay, now I, I chose the conjugate the way I did so that I've got the form of, you know, difference two squares right there. It's been factored so I can real easily multiply this out. If I multiply square root of x plus 2 times square root of x plus 2, that's just going to give me an x plus 2. And I know because <clears throat> it's a difference of two squares, I'm going to have a minus there. If I've got to now square this one, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just going to give me a 2. And again, I'm not going to get in a big hurry to multiply anything out here on the bottom. I'm just going to leave it x and then square root of x plus 2 plus square root of 2. All right, now I'm going to do a little simplifying there on my top. 2 minus 2 is going to give me a 0. And once again, I've got an x in the top and an x in the bottom. It's just going to leave me a 1 in that numerator. So if I rewrite that limit to see what I've got left, I've got the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over square root of x plus 2 plus square root of 2. All right, so now I'm ready to do my direct substitution, plugging 0 in for x. So I'm going to have 1 over square root of 0 plus 2 plus square root of 2. I can add those radicals on the bottom and get 1 over 2 square root of 2. All right. So again, another type of algebraic method that works really, really nicely is multiplying by the conjugate. Okay, so we'll just call that multiplying by the conjugate. 
I could also um, call this one rationalizing the numerator as well. Rationalizing the numerator. But basically that is three really nice algebraic methods for using, um, for our trying to evaluate limits if you're trying to take an analytical approach. You're always going to want to do that initial direct substitution to verify that you really do have 0 over 0. All right, once you do have that, then you've just got to look at the type of function you have and make a decision as to what type of algebraic approach you want to take. Definitely thanks for watching. Uh, be sure and give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. Thanks.